The P-21 Raider is the first new American bomber aircraft in more than 30 years. Almost every aspect of the program is classified. As evening fell over the Air Force's Plant 42 in Palmdale, the public got its first glimpse of the Raider in a tightly controlled ceremony. America's newest nuclear stealth bomber has made its debut after years of secret development, part of the Pentagon's answer to rising concerns over a future conflict with China. It started with a flyover of the three bombers still in service, the B-52 Stratofortress, the B-1 Lancer, and the B-2 Spirit. Then the hangar doors slowly opened and the B-21 was towed partially out of the building. This isn't just another airplane, Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin said. It's the embodiment of America's determination to defend the republic that we all love. The B-21 is part of the Pentagon's efforts to modernize all three legs of its nuclear triad, which includes silo-launched nuclear ballistic missiles and submarine-launched warheads as it shifts from the counter-terrorism campaigns of recent decades to meet China's rapid military modernization. We needed a new bomber for the 21st century that would allow us to take on much more complicated threats," said Deborah Lee James, the Air Force Secretary, when the Raider contract was announced in 2015. While the Raider may resemble the B-2, once inside, the similarities stop. And Kathy Warden, chief executive of Northrop Grumman Corp., which will build the bombers, the way it operates internally is extremely advanced compared to the B-2 because the technology has evolved so much in terms of the computing capability that we can now embed in the software of the B-21. Other advances likely include new ways to control electronic emissions so the bomber could spoof adversary radars and disguise itself as another object and use of new propulsion technologies. It's incredibly low observability, Miss Warden said. You'll hear it, but you really won't see it. The Air Force plans to build 100 that can deploy either nuclear weapons or conventional bombs that can be used with or without a human crew. Both the Air Force and Northrop also point to the Raiders' relatively quick development. The bomber went from contract award to debut in seven years. Other new fighter and ship programs have taken decades. The Air Force previously put the price at an average cost of $550 million US dollars each in 2010 dollars, roughly $753 million US dollars today. But it's unclear how much is actually being spent. The total will depend on how many bombers the Pentagon buys. We'll soon fly this aircraft test it, and then move it into production, and we'll build the bomber force in numbers suited to the strategic environment ahead. The B-2 was also envisioned to be a fleet of more than 100 aircraft, but the Air Force built only 21 due to cost overruns and a changed security environment after the Soviet Union fell. Fewer than that are ready to fly on any given day due to the significant maintenance needs of the aging bomber. The B-21 Raider, which takes its name from the 1942 Doolittle Raid over Tokyo, will be slightly smaller than the B-2 to increase its range. It won't make its first flight until 2023. However, Miss Warden said Northrop Grumman has used advanced computing to test the bomber's performance using a digital twin, a virtual replica of the one unveiled Friday. Ellsworth Air Force Base in South Dakota will house the bomber's first training program and squadron, though the bombers are also expected to be stationed at bases in Texas and Missouri. U.S. Senator Mike Rounds, a Republican of South Dakota, led the state's bid to host the bomber program. In a statement, he called it the most advanced weapon system ever developed by our country to defend ourselves and our allies. Northrop Grumman has also incorporated maintenance lessons learned from the B-2. B-2 pilots set a record when they flew 44 hours straight to drop the first bombs in Afghanistan after the September 11th attacks. The B-2 often does long round-trip missions because there are few hangars globally 
that can accommodate its wingspan, which limits where it can land for maintenance. The hangars also must be air-conditioned because the Spirit's windows don't open and hot climates can cook cockpit electronics. However, with the Raider's extended range, it won't need to be based in theater, Mr. Austin said. It won't need logistical support to hold any target at risk. A final noticeable difference was in the debut itself. While both went public in Palmdale, the B-2 was rolled outdoors in 1988 amid much public fanfare. Given advances in surveillance satellites and cameras, the Raider was just partially exposed, keeping its sensitive propulsion systems and sensors under the hangar and protected from overhead eyes. USAF Bomber Fleet Most Superior China and Russia do not have any bombers to match the USAF bomber fleet, both in capability and numbers. Chinese H-6 and futuristic H-20 will neither have the firepower nor reach compared to the USAF bomber fleet. The same is the case with the Russian Tu-95. Strategic bombers are one of the most crucial elements of the nuclear triad. B-21 will, in all likelihood, be able to deliver nukes at multiple targets in a single mission. To evade potent ground-based air defense systems, B-21's stealth capability will allow it to penetrate target defenses without being detected and threatened. Flight testing of B-21 will be grueling and time-consuming, and it'll take a few years before B-21 can join an operational USAF unit. First, B-21 has been designated as T-1. Other five B-21s are being constructed at Palmdale and Air Force Plant 42. Prototype B-21 has already undergone extensive tests on the ground. The date of the first flight will depend on the success and progress of future ground tests. Flight tests are scheduled to be conducted at Edwards Air Force Base. Due to exorbitant cost, the first B-21 will be more or less like a production aircraft, unlike other aircraft whose prototype aircraft are quite different from production aircraft. It will also reduce the flight test schedule, resulting in quicker induction as operational aircraft. The Road Ahead for B-21 B-21 development has become possible due to the personal and direct involvement of Frank Kendall, Secretary of the Air Force. He ensured that budgetary support was available and reinforced the USAF's proposal of seeking 145 aircraft. Indian military establishment needs to learn an extremely appropriate lesson. Frank Kendall's background is relevant to understanding how a decision-maker's exposure and experience directly impacts national security. Frank Kendall was Undersecretary of Defense Acquisition, Technology, and Logistics. Our Defense Secretary is not required to have any such background, hence the state of affairs. The USAF Strategic Bomber Fleet will likely comprise 145 B-21s and 75 B-52s, totaling 220. The existing 21 B-2s and B-1s will find parking slots in USAF's graveyard. All 220 bombers will not be nuclear-capable, how many will be is not known. How long it will take to receive the 145 bombers is not known. However, B-21 will become the mainstay of the USAF strategic bomber fleet till the end of the current century, at the very least. As of date, no Chinese or Russian strategic bomber will be able to match the performance of yet operationalized B-21. The performance and capability of B-2 the existing USAF strategic bomber is way ahead of any other bomber. However, it's at least five years from, in other words, 2027, before B-21 Raider can participate in a raid. Testing such complex machines is a painfully and agonizingly slow process. A few observations about window design have already surfaced. Ground trials and flight trials involving spin will consume months before test pilots give a thumbs up.